Fascia can be a major driver of chronic pain. When fascia becomes dysfunctional, through injury, inflammation, or lack of movement, it stiffens, thickens, and loses its ability to glide. That structural change matters, but the real issue is how fascia communicates with the nervous system. Remember, fascia is highly innervated, and when it becomes inflamed or fibrotic, the number of pain-sensing nerve fibers increases, especially those carrying substance P and CGRP. These fibers become more sensitive, more reactive, and harder to shut down. The result is a steady stream of nociceptive painful input, even during normal movement. That drives peripheral sensitization. Over time, it can lead to central sensitization, where the brain starts amplifying pain signals across the board. Inflamed fascia also releases pro-inflammatory cytokines and recruits immune cells. It creates a cycle of irritation, remodeling, and pain. In conditions like CRPS, you'll also see autonomic dysregulation layered on top of everything else. Research shows that stimulating fascia produces stronger, longer-lasting pain than stimulating muscle or skin, which means fascia isn't just involved, it's often the primary source. If we're not assessing fascia, we're missing a key part of the pain picture. It's not just a connective tissue. It's active, reactive, and deeply involved how the pain is generated and sustained. 